BioBalance HealthCast episode 205, Macronutrients for a Healthy Diet. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. This week, Dr. Mop and I are continuing a discussion that we're pretty excited about. Uh, let me frame it for you in, in terms of the previous discussion. In the, in the previous podcast, we talked about the nutrition and diet programs that Dr. Moffin offers at BioBalance Health that involve uh, a macronutrient approach to eating and dieting, uh, and in particularly involve genetic testing to determine uh, if you are uh, if you would be better served by a low-carb diet or a low-fat diet or a Mediterranean diet or a balanced diet, and, and why those are so, and then programs that she has developed and her staff to help you monitor and modify your eating so that you achieve the best benefit from that. And in that presentation, we made reference to a presentation that we had observed when we went to a medical conference together uh, in Orlando by, that was presented by Dr. Stephen Maisley on uh, functional nutrition. And his information was so outstanding that we decided that we would take this podcast and talk specifically about some of the slides that he had presented uh, in his talk. These are foods that you should incorporate into your diet right. in some way. And they will f fulfill your nutritional needs. So okay. he, he gave them cute names. I mean, like fishing for seafood. Okay, so seafood's important i mean it has it has in fact you don't need to know what it has in it <laughs> it has all of these is, is sent essential um oils that you can that decrease your cholesterol and decrease your your lipid As profile my mother used to say you don't need to know what's in it just eat it I <laughs> yeah kind of like that so yeah. i'm i'm i mean he, You're gonna be the he mother gives better dis yeah. yeah that's it so um seafood lean meats meaning cut the fat off don't eat the fat with your meat and try to avoid fatty meats like ribeyes, which tastes great, but they are not very good for you because they have marbled fat within right. them. So you can't really cut it off. Greens. You should have green stuff and not cook to death greens right. with every meal. That's don't, a don't salad. Don't leach all the nutrients out right. of it by boiling it to death. Right. So either steam it. Sometimes microwaving's okay. Saute it in olive oil. Saute it in olive oil, or With a little garlic. Eat salads. I mean, eat salads. that's. I mean, that is any that will fulfill many of your vitamin needs without having to take another supplement. Fiber thir greater than thirty grams of fiber a day is necessary for us to soak up the fats from our food and, as I'll say, poop them out. That's how you get. That's what fiber does, and fiber also helps. Get rid of all of the byproducts of your food yes. every day because you should be having a bowel movement every day. Remember, your mother told you that and asked you that at breakfast every morning, which is why I didn't do that to my daughter. <laughs> and when you get old and go into the nursing home, that's all people that's talk all about. They talk so about. if you have to visit any elderly re re residents, that's what you'll hear them discussing. So, so get so. get over that and just eat your fiber, which means eat carrots, eat celery, eat salads. I mean, eat you need even roughage. potatoes. Eat even potatoes have have uh, fiber in them. I mean, anything that is a fresh food that you get in the in, in the refrigerated aisle that is not processed and not cooked will have a lot of fiber in it. So, right. fruits and vegetables basically is what we're lo we're looking at, and whole grains and nuts. So he also thinks beans are a wonderful food, although in my household that would create a lot of methane. So I'm not sure that that's a great idea, but for most households, that is a good idea. And many of my friends love beans. You may need to get the genetic beans. testing done. Yeah, first. I know. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know if you know what crucifers are. Crucifers are types of vegetables that have antioxidants, anti aging, anti cancer, anti. All the bad things that we talk about are are held, are, are prevented with cruci so, so cruciferous give me an example. vegetables. Cruciferous. So that's like a cucumber. No, Brussels no. sprouts. Brussels sprouts. Broccoli. God. Anything. I cabbage. Bro Broccoli's okay. I hate Brussels sprouts. Sorry, I love them. So that's kind of a um, a weekly a weekly vegetable in our house. So all of those things that you can. 
put into your diet that you don't dislike, or I'm sure I could figure out a way to I'm make sure them. You're listening to if it. I put them in bacon fat, I'm sure you'd like that. Yeah, well, but that's not my. That's yeah. not. That's not. Uh, to be taken you put as a recommendation. Yeah, that's your, your theory. No. But that's not that's not a recommendation either. But if you can develop a, a way to cook crucifer, cruciferous vegetables, or you can take DIM, D I M, which is a supplement that has all it's of that broccoli and based. that's broccoli based and, right. and cauliflower also is a cruciferous vegetable. And you can fix cauliflower so that it looks like mashed potatoes. We fooled my son with that for years before he found out he was eating cauliflower. <laughs> <laughs> but as you're talking about all these green vegetables, I keep remembering this movie from the 1920s called Ninochka. I, I wasn't Greta alive Garbo. in the 1920s. Greta Garbo goes, plays a, uh, <laughs> Anyway, she goes in this fancy French restaurant, mm -hmm. and she says, oh, I'll just have uh, some salad and some greens. And the, the very arrogant, pompous French waiter looks at her and says, Madam, this is a restaurant, not a meadow. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we want you to eat the meadow. The meadow is much healthier than yeah, the restaurant. Raise in the meadow. So now this is about berry time. That's usually late summer, early fall. So berries are really good for you, and they taste really good. As long as you don't put sugar all over them, right. they are really good for you. Natural sweeteners, right. And you, you can use natural sweeteners. Even I, um, Stevia is something you can grow in your garden, which I grow. And you can put that in your smoothies. It sweetens your so it comes smoothies in the up. Blue package? <laughs> no. 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 Come, <laughs> I knew that. It's called Truvia. <laughs> it usually is white and green, or if you want to buy it at the store, or you can grow it. Yeah. Or you can, and so that can be frozen, or it can be crumbled up over your berries, and it makes them even sweeter than they are. Nuts are important. I use those for. Uh, I suggest those and use those. For a low glycemic snack in the middle of the day, so you don't get mainly hypoglycemic. Unsalted nuts, unsalted nuts. Yeah. and it, for cashews, I, I prefer um, raw cashews. Raw cashews are sweeter, as, and they don't have salt baked. as they're roasted. Roasted, as opposed to roasted, they're very high in protein and very low in carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. So probably the best the best nut you could have. But nuts are very good for you and have essential elements that that will support your health. So eat nuts, eat fish, eat green vegetables, eat cru crucifer, Crucif cruciferous vegetables. And then he says green tea, garlic. You know, all of us Italians eat garlic, smell garlic, sweat garlic. Chinese tea It's too. really good for you. <laughs> I'm going to grow garlic next year. Yeah. Um, green tea, nonfat yogurt, although I think that I don't know that the fat is a problem in yogurt. So... I, dr I eat regular yogurt. Um, I think the taste is the problem in yogurt. I it's love an, it's an I acquired love it. taste. It is an me. acquired taste, but you can yeah. get like coconut yogurt, which is very low in carb and tastes like coconuts, like coconut cream. I mean, it tastes really good. Um, so you'll have to you'll have to figure out what tastes good for you. You can put berries in your yogurt, yes. and that will make it taste better. Unprocessed grains. I'm not exactly sure what he means by that, but whole whole not bleached whole like, grain like, bread. I remember when I was in high school, not, back in the dark ages, my <laughs> one of the commercials that was popular today was a Wonder Bread commercial. This is Wonder Bread builds healthy bodies twelve. Which ways. was a lie. And and it's <laughs> and the, our teacher was telling us that he was saying you got to look at commercials and you got to be interested in finding out what the scam is in the commercial. Uh, and he said, they bleach all the nutrients out of the, the grain and sell you white bread. If you're eating white bread, you're eating nothing but fiber. And carbs. So, so And the, he even believes that um, chocolate is really good for you, which I think is awesome because those chocolate-covered almonds from Sam's, oh, they yeah. have a permanent place in my house Dark now. chocolate. Dark yeah. chocolate. Now, can you put chocolate over broccoli and Brussels sprouts? Is I don't know. You could try it and tell, tell everybody <laughs> what you think. I wouldn't do it. So, having said that, that's all the good stuff that you can eat, and you can make it taste good. I mean, that's pretty much how I've eaten. See, my, my mother was a herbalist and a very concerned um, chef, basically. She, the plainer. She was ahead of her time. She was way ahead of her time. Yes. The pl we, I, we never had dessert. I didn't know what that was, really, and, and until people, I went out to dinner with people, and they were always having dessert. Never really, I don't really love dessert like some people do because I wasn't brought up with it. But we always had berries or we had something fresh, watermelon or cantaloupe for dessert. And so that was enough sweet to to finalize the meal. 
But everything we had was low fat, low carb, except for pasta. And of course, my dad's Italian, so we always had pasta. And so that was the only exception. But we didn't have a lot of bread either. But your grandparents on both sides were peasant stock mm -hmm. and they were somewhat rotund. They were really rotund, but my and mother was. So wasn't. your mom and dad both were not, were not. because she fed them right. properly. That's right. And we took yeah. handfuls of vitamins every day, supplements. Okay. So, and that also helped us, I think. You know, I don't even know what I took. I just know that it was enough to be another meal. Yeah. So, and and I I suggest uh, B, supplements. K, D. Yeah, everything. So yeah. I suggest supplements because we can't get it in our foods usually unless right. you eat perfectly, I'd, uh, and we're all t too busy to be perfect. But we right. have to we have to support what we're eating. And if we're having certainly if we're having a bad eating day, we should be supporting our uh, our bodies with supplements. So. So what about the bad things? Yeah. Okay. So his list of bad things are Which the ten. You will also see the slide. The top ten junk foods are, of course, soft drinks with sugar, cake, sweet rolls, donuts, and pastries. Breakfast. Puts, <laughs> yeah. Some people's <laughs> breakfast, and that your your old breakfast. Yeah. But honestly, the longer you go without eating those, the less they taste good. You know it, that is true, and it's also the less uh, attractive they are. I mean, I still torture myself. I'll go to a bakery and stand and look at all the pastries, but I don't buy them anymore. Uh, good. Very often. You just torture Maybe yourself. Maybe once or twice a year. So yeah. Don't torture me. <laughs> Never mind. It's a masochistic yeah, trait. It's one of those genetic testing things. So they say hamburgers, cheeseburgers, and meatloaf. I believe if you get if you it's actually. The bread. It's the bread and... And sometimes it, the mayonnaise, if you use mayonnaise, you yeah. use mustard, use something else. Right. So so I, I think that's part of it. Pizza, you can also, you can adjust these. Like you can eat, instead of pizza, having the thick crust pizza with thin crust. 10 yeah. things on it, you can get a thin crust pizza with just tomato sauce, some cheese, and one, or, or you can even, you can even have like onions and mushrooms, you don't even have to have meat on them. So as long as the crust is thin, you can get around this as being a bad junk food. Potato chips, corn chips, popcorn. I know. So that's anything that you can, I was talking to a patient and he said, I told my mother, anything that you open up out of a bag is off your list. <laughs> and, and he's probably right. Yeah. Um, white rice. I also put brown rice in there. Honestly, white rice and brown rice are the highest glycemic Index foods for the glycemic load, which we and we'll glycemic talk about. load foods. So if yeah. you have white rice and brown rice, you are just zooming your blood sugar and your insulin up. And if you can eat Chinese food or Japanese food without all the, the rice, rice right. you can have just a little dose of rice, then it's very healthy. Right. It's usually seafood and it's fresh vegetables and they steam them. And but you have but you have to get the the rice off right. the list. Rolls, buns, English muffins, and bagels. My favorite thing is to have somebody come in and say, I eat a great diet. I said, what do you have for breakfast? Bagels. Ha yeah, or half a bagel. Half a bagel. Cheese, yeah. well, half a bagel is like two and a half pieces of bread because they just, it's, it's, it's just not dense. leavened. It's it, yeah. it's actually dense. It is leavened a little bit. It's it's really dense mm -hmm. carbohydrates. So I just from there I'm I'm like okay so the rest of the diet's going to be really bad as I'm going through what they eat and then right. we have to modify mm -hmm. what they eat cuz they get tired in the morning. I wonder why? Cuz if you eat a lot of carbohydrate right out, right out of bed you're going to be exhausted by so 10. So cold fried chicken is a better breakfast than a bagel? I'm not sure. Cuz it's fried. Cold baked cold chicken. Cold baked chicken is better. <laughs> Actually, it's not a real breakfast food but it's better. Yeah. But boiled eggs. Well, you know, boiled eggs are the perfect food. food. Yeah, exactly. So you can eat boiled eggs. You can eat cheese that's not processed. Yes, the the key about cheese is the process. The soft, gooey cheeses uh, are those processed. Are, those are very bad. The for bad you. ones. The aged cheeses, the hard cheeses, mm -hmm. aren't as aren't as bad. But for somebody that needs a low fat diet. That might be something that you would avoid just because there's some fat. But right. for the rest of us, it's fine. Beer and French fried potatoes are his last, the last top ten of terrible junk foods that Americans eat and that make us sick. Yeah. So those. So if you go out regularly and have beer and pizza. Beer and, <laughs> yeah, you should change your. You and, should and, change and your a donut plan. for dessert or <laughs> cupcake. You're in trouble. <laughs> so so he so here are the two most. The two most common toxins 
he considers in the American diet. Okay. And we don't, of course, consider them toxins. One is corn, corn syrup. And that's huge. I mean, that's almost in everything you buy that's processed. And sugar, lo- and it's in sugar-loaded drinks. And also hydrogenated fats. And that's, if you eat fried anything that you don't do at home, then probably you're eating lard or Crisco or hydrogenated fats, which then go to your body and, and attach to your vessels, causing heart disease. I, I it is when, not when they good use for things you. like polyunsaturated and hydrogenated, and mm-hmm. nobody knows what any of those things mean. Well, hydrogenated fats, basically anything that is and French fries, anything that is fried has hydrogenated fats and you would have to like if we fry things we we use sesame or peanut oil which is healthier and not hydrogenated so we can and if that's for that is for frying if you were going to fry something if you were going to just cook something on the stove then and it's not at a high heat then you can use uh, olive oil or Actually, coconut we've learned oil. we rarely eat potatoes. My son still loves them, and his metabolism is young enough and healthy enough to tolerate it. So instead of frying, having French fries mm-hmm. with burgers or something, we will cut red potatoes up pretty small, uh, douse them in garlic and olive oil, put them on a roasting pan, and put them in the oven at 350 for 40 minutes. And they're they're crisp. They're it's adorable that you know that. <laughs> I, I love my son. I cook for him, even though okay. I don't eat those things. Okay. Well, in any case, this doctor calls hydrogenated fats embalming fluid. Yeah. Basically, the the stuff that is put into people who are gone, and to preserve them. So. That's what how he, how well, bad it is, and and that's another way you can look at food when you're shopping in the grocery store as opposed to the open or fresh market. Uh, the life expectancy of the food, the mm-hmm. long shelf life of the food, the longer the shelf life, the less nutrients in the food, the more preservatives. More preservatives. You're yeah, that's true. That's true. Then, then he went on to talk about supplements. And things that we don't get in our diet regularly. Mm-hmm. And my my favorite of those, of course, everyone knows we don't get enough calcium or magnesium. We don't right. and we don't get enough Fiber. vitamin D. So those are those are supplements. And then but vitamin K is has been long lost right. in, in the press. But vitamin K is very important to clotting our blood and to many other processes. In our body, like if you bruise all the time, you probably don't have enough vitamin K, and it's not in easily, um, easily cooked or common foods. It's in kale, it's in collards, it's in spinach at high levels, all, and all of those are dark green leafy. But beets and broccoli, beets and broccoli, um, Brussels sprouts, raw onions. I don't usually eat raw onions. Parsley, which I grow in my in my in my garden, but I don't know that we've ever had it except as a garnish uh asparagus cabbage and iceberg lettuce so all of those have vitamin k in them so the best idea is to take 10 micrograms a day of vitamin k as a pill it's very inexpensive you can get it at every health food store if you're not on a blood thinner then that that would be acceptable but if you're going to go into surgery, you should have 90 micrograms a day of vitamin K before and after surgery so that you don't have too much bleeding from your capillaries. When, when skin's cut, it needs vitamin K to clot the blood. So if you're so, going to do a procedure that's non-emergent, mm-hmm. you actually for years have asked your patients to take vitamin K for a couple of weeks before they come in for the surgery. Yes, because I know that most, most Americans are low on it, and mm-hmm. it causes blood loss in surgery, or it causes bruising when we do injections. Right. We do a lot of fillers, you know, to make people more beautiful. Right. So we ask them to take vitamin K so they don't bruise and so that they don't leave our office with little purple things. Vitamin K is very helpful at preventing that. So that's one of the things you need to take away from this and and make sure you either eat the vegetables or take vitamin K as a supplement. It also helps bone uh, bone growth and bone solidification. So if you're taking calcium and you're taking vitamin D, you should add vitamin K to that. 
help your bones. Now, can you get a mix, like a multivitamin for all mm -hmm. those things? Because yeah, I so saw Dr. Nancy Snyderman on television mm -hmm. the other day, and she said multiple vitamins are a really expensive way to urinate. Well, what I think what she's talking about is that they don't have enough of any of the vitamins okay. that you need. Okay. So basically, she's saying that if you don't use them or if they're not in a form that you can absorb, right. then you're just going to urinate them off. Right. Now, I find that, I mean, I take Vima, mm -hmm. which is one of the, it, it's a... Um, source of all vitamins and minerals now, that's in a liquid supplement. It's a drink. liquid supplement you drink every morning so that I don't have to take a multivitamin. And in general, if you have even if you have a bad diet, that that kind of makes up for everything. So I have a Vima in the morning and a Verve which has a little bit of natural caffeine, not caffeine caffeine, but natural substances that have caffeine like uh, effects. In them, so it doesn't make you jittery, but it gives you that afternoon lift that some of us need at three o'clock. When, so, when so the we're patients exhausted. that come to your office for the nutritional mm -hmm. planning, can do you uh, provide Bema for we, them, we or do you connect them to someone who does provide it? Well, it's it's an interesting product. It is only marketed through um, through people. Right. Basically, it's a it's it's I don't want to say Amway, but it's a little bit like that process but it's the good part about this is you get everything you need at your door once a month you don't have to go to the store you don't have to think about it you get everything and they even have products that help with weight loss which we will be recommending they have a line that has everything in their vitamin product the the not vitamin but total nutrition product in their weight loss product called body b-o-d-e so they have nutrition and uh, supplements that decrease your hunger and sustain your blood sugar. So they have come to the table as well with a weight loss product for foods to help you get to your ideal weight, right. but also give you the nutrition you need. So we're using that or recommending it right. in our weight loss plans for certain people. Not everyone, Not everyone. needs that. But I think liquid is is the ideal. What I think she was referring to is many of us don't even dissolve those vitamins right. and don't take them in. But if in, they're in a form of a food, right. and this is multiple foods, like an entire grocery cart of fresh vegetables and fruit in this one dose, then we absorb it immediately. And so it's getting into our system. We aren't just urinating what it What about a, a more mainstream product like V8? I mean, V8 a, is instead of having your vegetables. Yeah, and, so, and that's legit. And that's legit. Okay. That's legit. You can, and that's liquid, so that's right. good. But it's not going to have quickly. fruits in it. Yeah. Okay. So if you're not having any vegetables that day, and you don't think you're eating, yeah, I was going to do that. That would have been <laughs> not good to have on camera. No. <laughs> you can you can hit your own forehead. Yeah, exactly. But if you're not having any vegetables, then. Um, then that that would be a, an ideal okay. supplement. Although if your if your genetic testing or your diet plan tells you that you are salt sensitive and need to stay away from salt, they do make low salt versions mm -hmm. of that. They do. So hopefully this will give you some information to start thinking about in terms of the way you eat and the way you purchase and consume foods. But our message continues to be that for longer, healthier lives. You need to exercise, you need to eat healthy foods in healthy ways, and you need to get hormone replacement. So please go to BioBalance Health, look at the website, look at the things that are offered there, uh, make an appointment for a dietary assessment, uh, make an appointment for a hormone assessment, and see what can be done to help you get to a healthier place so that you can live longer, more actively. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.